Hey! What's that? <laughs> Day 19 today. Get excited. Oh, Fans. boom. Today yeah. we are talking about Jesus calls us to be poor, right? So poor. we have a message for you today. We want you to be filthy rich. Like, guys, I hope you make so much money in life. Like, I pray Ballin'. that God would bless your businesses, would bless your jobs. Mm-hmm. I want you to roll in the money. Like, I want God to bless you, and God wants to bless you. And and the church wants you to be wealthy, right? Wealth Whoa. is not... Yeah, gospel poverty today. When we no, talk about Christ... Like prosperity gospel oh, you preach oh, in here. Are you a televangelist? Oh. Because the book I picked up said poverty, mm. chastity, and obedient soul. So... So let's let's clear up gospel poverty, right? Gospel poverty is not destitution. God does not want you to be like a homeless person on the street. He doesn't want your family to be homeless, right? God wants you to be wealthy, Most of you. and He wants you <laughs> He wants you to be filled with riches, right? And uh, and however, it, you see, gospel poverty isn't about how much we make; it's about how much we give, right? And God wants us um, to to He wants to bless us, and I I want you to work hard in life. God wants you to work hard in life. The church wants you to work hard in life, and to receive just compensation for your hard work, so that you can receive the treasures of this world, so that you can give them to others, right? Like, uh, imagine if I had the ability. I know for a while, like when I first started praying into gospel poverty, I was always concerned, like I don't want to make too much. Like I want I want us to make sure that we we live a normal, like simple lifestyle. So I, we were very, like, I was concerned not to make too much and work because, oh, well, we can live in in these means. And if so we if we can, then we, right. And I had a, a, a friend, I was actually in Canada and uh, this friend in Canada, we were chatting and he was talking about how like, Dan, like God wants you to make a, a, a giving. He doesn't just want you to make a living. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that stuck out to me so much that God doesn't just want us to make a living. He wants us to make a giving. And ultimately, I think when we understand that Christ calls us to be poor, that Christ calls us to gospel poverty, it's so that we can make a giving. Mm -hmm. That God wants us to evaluate uh, our budget and say, how simple can we live so that we can give as much as possible? And like, if I make a million dollars, that's amazing because I've already chosen as a family, we've chosen the kind of lifestyle, the simple lifestyle we're going to live. And now, now we're able to give an abundance away, right? But if I make a million dollars and then I hoard $998,000, then, Mm -hmm. then I haven't made a uh, a giving. I've just build a comfort kingdom. Right, exactly. So this concept of the comfort kingdom has been really powerful for us. Mm -hmm. Are we living for the kingdom of God? Are we spending all of our time, all of our Mm -hmm. money, all of our heart building our comfort kingdom? And our comfort kingdom is really no more than a jail cell because Mm -hmm. it's a kingdom of lies. Because the reality is that if money could buy happiness, there'd be a whole lot more people happy in this world, right? The reality is that what this world offers us as comfort, as goodness, mm-hmm. it's all lies. It leaves us coming up short. That's why it's the narrow path. That's why the abundant life is so difficult yep. for many to to pull into their lives. They, we can't grasp it. We can't get it because we're looking for love in all the wrong places, right? Yep. Love has a face. Love has a name. His name is is Jesus. We are called to live like Jesus. And in doing so, that's where we find abundance. Listen, Biggie Small said it, Dan. Mo money, mo problems. That's the gospel of Biggie. (laughs) <laughs> it's true. The gospel it's according true. to Biggie. And you need I to didn't know. even know who Biggie Smalls was. Yes, you do. No, but with, I... with Puff Daddy? Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, right. I, got, I got it. <laughs> but this is a reality. A lot of times, the more we have, the more we want, right? It's a prison. Like, it's a prison, and I'll be very, like, superficial, right? Like, this is how my mind works. I'm just, you know, I'll always be honest with you, right? Like, I'm starving after these shoes, right? But as soon as I have the shoes, it's like, but I don't know if I, like, actually have, like, a top that would go with those shoes. Mm. It sounds, I hate to say it out loud. It sounds so superficial, right? And I've got the shirt, and I'm like, but are my jeans, like, up and coming enough, right? Like, are they cool? Like, the, you know, we work in high school ministry, and I'm a mom in my 30s, right? Mm. I rock that mom ponytail. Is this headband? The young girls don't wear these no more. See, I don't have those concerns because I'm just so cool. (laughs) That's why I'm here, right? If you're you're in Dan's zone, then more power to you. But I just want you to know, as we've said so many times, that we're climbers (laughs) along, side with you in this book. But even though I have those spiraling thoughts and they race sometimes, 
in my heart of hearts, I know that those are lies. I know that the one yeah. desire leads to another, leads to another. And true freedom comes in being detached from all those needs, detached from all that yep. stuff. Yep. But again, that's details. So Yeah, and we're not talking like, trust me, this is this book is not promoting socialism or communism, oh, help right? Me, like Jesus, like we no. want we want good, authentic economics, yeah. but we want people to choose volunteer poverty like Jesus chose volunteer mm. poverty that that we 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 earn so that we can give and we we ask ourselves well not how much do I have to give but how much can I give how much can I give and Jesus it says at the beginning of today's reading it says that Jesus spoke to the great crowds and he says every one of you who does not every every one of you who does not renounce all of his possessions cannot be my disciple mm. and uh I want this week to challenge you as a married couple um, because I want you as a couple to renounce all of your possessions, to say that you're not living for this world anymore and, and to, uh, to look at your house and say um, adding new furniture and uh, new blinds and new vacations and new um, cars isn't the top priority anymore, that the top priority is going to be to ask ourselves, well, how simple can we live so that we can build more people up and love more people and serve more people and give more. And God wants to bless you. And I believe, I really do believe, the more we give, the more the Lord's going to bless you, right? Because God oh wants gosh, to, yes. he, he, wants, he wants good stewards of his incomes. Mm -hmm. and, and if he's going to give those who treat kingdom dollars like kingdom dollars, kingdom he's going to give you more kingdom dollars. Mm -hmm. And he wants to make you wealthy so that you can serve his poor. And, and, and I just think about the kingdom and, like, are you going to build up your comfort kingdom or are you going to build up the kingdom of God? And I pray so much that in the next couple of days as we dive into gospel poverty that you understand we're not pushing some economic system. We are pushing uh, the gospel that God wants you to build the kingdom of God. And own, the kingdom of God can only be built not when the government forces people to give their money away, but when Christians mm -hmm. voluntarily choose to give abundance yeah. out of the abundance that you've received and to give when it hurts and mm -hmm. until it hurts. What's that Mother Teresa quote you always say? If we give until it hurts, there will be no more hurt, only more love. Wow. Praise We're going to close with that. That's a good one. Amen. Good night. See ya.